What's up, YouTube family? Gerald Greenlee here with Cleaning Green Lawn Service in South Georgia. Hey, hope y'all are doing great. Uh, it is nighttime here. If you hear noise in the background, it just cut off. Did you hear that? It'll start back, though. My daughter is vacuuming her car. She is over there detailing. My wife's talking to her right now. That's probably why she turned off. You can see it is dark. There is the building across the road that houses the O'Quinn Baptist Church. We work around the clock around here. Uh, we don't slow down much, but uh, just got done feeding the goats, and I got a new tool to show you. So, uh, fair warning, this is a tool video, uh, an assembly video, but it's a product you might be interested in. I don't know. So just kind of fair warning uh, throughout this video, you're probably going to hear a vacuum run in the background some, and you're probably going to hear my goats hollering because it doesn't matter how much you feed those things. If they know I'm outside, they think they're supposed to get something to eat. So, hey, let's jump right into the video. Hope you enjoy it. All right, here we go. You ready? Nope. Ready? Nope. Nope. Let's see what I can do. Egg. Bruh. Fab. What do we get? Broadcast spreader. Toe. Not push. Toe. So that's what we got. Uh, haven't unboxed it yet. I bought this uh, today. I picked that up. And also you can see I got weed and feed uh, in the back of my truck. Uh, this is about a two acre property that I do. Uh, you'll get to see that video. It'll probably be the next video that goes out. A two acre property that I about two and a quarter that I put uh, weed and feed on and I pushed it last year with that bad boy right there man I felt like I had just been in a triathlon yeah <laughs> I'm getting too old for that so uh, I bought this got pretty good reviews on it um, I think I paid man I hate to tell you what I paid because I don't know. Let's look at the receipt. All right, there is the price, uh, one thirty nine, one hundred thirty nine dollars. You see that thirteen ninety. Uh, I am a veteran, and I get a discount, so it come out to be one twenty five, uh, one twenty five ten is what I paid. So, uh, and then that's plus tax. You got to add tax you know to it so i don't know anyway it probably cost me like i get 10 percent off and we pay like eight percent tax so i really only get two two percent off technically with my military discount uh and, you know the discount's done then the tax so anyway that's what we got uh this is gonna be an assembly video i was blown away by my agra fab 48 inch aerator I got about three videos out on that, and those three videos are almost half of my views. Now, not watch time, because some of those weren't watched a real long time. In fact, one of them was like only a five-minute video, I think. But almost probably at least 35 40% of the views for this entire channel come from that aerator. So, I don't know. Maybe folks will be interested in this, but uh, this is going to be an assembly video. So, let me get it unboxed show you what we got. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do these steps and then I'm going to walk you through what I did. So uh, basically step one in this process is to take the hitch and put the plug in the end of it. Uh, the plug is just one of these little plastic plugs that's ribbed like this. It just drives into the end right here. Uh, then you're supposed to take the cotter pin, uh, put the pin in with a cotter pin in it. Uh, this was already assembled together. Uh, you got two, uh, these are your arms here, uh, going to the hitch. 
Uh, these are concave so that this fits inside of them. Uh, two inch bolt, two inch quarter inch bolt with a nylock nut uh, on it. Uh, you don't tighten those all the way yet. We're going to need them loose for another step. Uh, if you're following along, you need a 7 16 flat wrench, ratchet, uh, channel locks, adjustable wrench, whatever works for you. So that is going to be uh, step one in your quick start uh, guide here. So I'm going to go ahead and work on step two, and then I will come back and show you uh, what I did on step two. Just for the sake of making the video short, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to show you the very next thing we do is put plugs into the uh, hopper support arms. Uh, one of the things you can do is lay it down. Let me make sure you can see that. Yeah. And then just take this and set it over it. And uh, give it a bump. See there? Nice and flat. There we go. Got that uh, in. That was part of that step. Uh, that's part of that step too. Part of step two is you want to take these uh, hex flange bearings uh, into the hopper support. Uh, it doesn't have a specific side that I can tell for these, so you just want to put one in uh, like this. You don't use a ratchet for this. You get it nice and flush. And the main thing will be that you do not put them both in in the same direction. So these are ultimately going to want to be uh, outside, outside. seen all those building projects I do do you know how many hammers I have more than two there's probably one sitting right here in the shop so anyway that is step two now step step three we're going to begin to put all this stuff together with the axle and all that so I'm going to get it laid out and then show you what we're doing all right, so I try to remove some of the extra stuff from the workspace here so we don't get overly confused on this part. Uh, on this, which is going to be step three in our quick start guide, uh, I'm going to show you what we need first. Uh, two inch by quarter inch hex head bolts. We'll need two nuts for those. Those are nylock nuts. And then we're going to need these two spacers, which are spacer 26. Uh, spacer 26, if you want to identify that, you can set it on there. It matches the thickness of uh, the one in the paperwork. So, uh, we have slid these on. Remember, these bushings, uh, the flat part to the outside, this just slides on the gear. Uh, we need to make sure we got that forward. And then we're going to take the hitch assembly. And this bolt will go through from the outside uh, down here at the very bottom. Then you need one spacer to go on there. And then I'm going to put the hitch assembly. What we're going to do right now is just put this nut, we're just going to stick this nut on. And I'm going to give you a close up of what this looks like. So if you're having trouble, uh, these instructions, as compared to the aerator so far, are very, very good. Uh, so, again, you are using that very bottom hole spacer, and then as well as the bottom hole in here. Uh, I am running it through, the bolt through from the outside. Are you going to be YouTube famous coming out here? That's what it looks like right there. Two inch hex head, quarter inch bolt, nut, nylock nut, and then spacer number 26 in between them. 
And remember these flanges stay to the outside. Outside. All right, here we go. Uh, next step in the process. Uh, we want to take uh, <clears throat> the cross brace, which is number seven. We're going to put the bushing uh, number 40 into it. Bushing number 40 has got some little locking detents on the bottom, and it's got a flat spot on the top. All it does, it just pops in there, okay? Uh, this is going to stabilize um, the spreader. This is going to slide down. You're going to need some two and a half inch. So you had some two inch a while ago. You got some two and a quarters in here. This one you're going to use two and a half, same thing, quarter inch. All you're going to use is nylock nuts. Uh, and we're, what we're going to do now, let me see if I can get this where you can see it. We're going to come through here. You're actually going to line this hole up with the hole in the hitch and this one. It may take a little bit of... Uh, Put the nut on the back side, and again, this is not something you want to tighten yet. I'm going to flip this around. Just in case somebody's having trouble with it, to try to show you a little better. This bolt is going to go through the brace, the, uh, the uh, bend support, and through the hitch. And we'll have the nut on the inside. So we just got to lift this up and line them all up. Now you don't want to tighten these, but uh, I do want to snow them. And the main reason, not snug them, I want to make sure I get the nylock started in the thread. Because if not, these nuts could fall off. Right, so we got that started right there. Hey, it's starting to come together, isn't it? Sure is. Alright, let's get ready for the next step. Alright, next step, we're going to drop the spreader on. Obviously, this has to be up. Uh, if you notice in the spreader, there's a hole. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but there's a hole right here. And then there is a hole in here. And I can turn this to get it. So that pin, Carter pin, uh, number 30. I'm going to take that and drop it down. We just got to get it to go through there, and bend the end, but I got to grab my plier. While I was grabbing my channel locks, I thought, just so you know I'm not lying, I do have a hammer. All right, then all we got to do is just bend this. One side one way, the other side the other way. we go all right we got that next we're going to be putting the uh hopper on all right when putting the hopper on we're going to want to take this uh the square that's in here we're going to have the shaft this shaft's going up through it this for the spreader we'll set it down on there like that and then we're going to line it up and uh we'll eventually put our bolts in it but before we do that We've got to get spacer, uh, number, uh, bushing number 39, and and we got to put the uh, agitator hairpin in the spreader as well. So let me get that stuff together, and I'll show it to you real quick. 
All right, I'm going to take the camera off my tripod. I'm going to try to get down there and let you see this. But one of the things that we have to have is hopper bushing number 39. This is going to slide down into the square. This part will be up. Uh, bushing number 25 is going to go on top of it. And then our agitator uh, hairpin is going to go on top of it through the, uh, through, uh, through the uh, spreader. So... First thing is here, and again, if you have trouble seeing this, uh, sometimes this stuff comes out better on my computer than it does uh, out here like this when I'm working on it. So, but I do know that it is it is somewhat dark in there. I don't even know how I'm going to be able to get that in with one hand. Alright, I'm going to have to have both hands, it looks like, to uh, get this in. Now, I'm going to stick it in. Uh, look, let me see if I can let you see that. It's just going down in that square. And then on top of that, we are going to put... Uh, spacer number 25 and then we'll slide that pin through it and I'll show you it, it assembled and there we go and part of the reason I was having trouble is because that does not sit all the way flush didn't realize that it bottoms out so then we got our spacer we got our agitator pin and then of course when we get this where it goes all of that's going to slide up it's going to be closer uh, to that so let's get all of our parts ready uh, for the next step all right, next thing we're going to do is attach the hopper to the supports uh, with two bolts. We're going to use the lower holes inside the hopper. So if you're looking at it from the back, it's not going to be the front holes. It will be the back holes, which are actually lower in the hopper. To do that, you're going to need bolt 23, which is a one and three quarter inch, uh, quarter inch bolt. Uh, you're going to need a, a flat washer, uh, which is uh, flat washer number 34, and a nylon washer, which is uh, washer number 33. And if you have any questions on these bolts, because I think I might have mis misspoke on the size a minute ago, what we have in here is we have inch and a quarter, two inch, and I think the other one's two and a half. But if you notice this, this is, if you lay it on top of it, it is, this is to scale. Uh, so that makes it really simple. So we're just going to take this. Then, of course, we got to have our nylock nuts to go on the bottom. But... Uh, we're going to line up our first one here, just like that, and this one is just like that, so this is what they look like down from the top. You got bolt, metal washer, nylon washer, right? And then, and listen, if, if I'm making this sound overly simple and you're thinking, does this guy think I'm an idiot? No, I don't. I just, uh, I know sometimes people like to watch video instructions. Sometimes this stuff can be a little bit confusing. And so I am trying to help the person out that might need uh, some help in this process. That's all I'm trying to do. So if you're a pro uh, at assembling things, you don't need my video because this is, as I said a few minutes ago, a much better video or much better instruction than what they gave me on the plug aerator. Those were not all of that good. All right, so we, we're not tightening that. We're just gonna we're just gonna snug that down and get ready for the next step. Right, in this step, we are st installing our adjustable stop. So what you have, uh, you got a three quarter inch carriage bolt. Uh, it's again, it's it's quarter inch uh, threads. You have uh, we have our stop, our adjustable stop number forty four, uh, which is this piece with the two metal tabs on it. You can see that tab and that tab, and then we have a nylon washer. And we have a wing nut, and so that's going to be designed to where, uh, you know, we can do that. Which actually, this handle is in the wrong place. So, I'm just looking at that, and I know that's not going to work. <laughs> so, this is real-time stuff, real mistakes here. Uh, 
the handle is obviously going to have to be in the stop position. Then we want to put this assembly from under the bottom. And I believe I watched a review on this, not an assembly, but a review on somebody, a user. And if I'm not mistaken, one of the issues was this nylon nut. And I could see how uh, this nylon wing nut, I could see how that would strip out very easy. Uh, those are probably quarter 20 threads. Uh, you could take this to a hardware store, which I probably will, and get a metal one. Uh, to fit that and you can just put a little more tension on metal without worrying about stripping it out so anyway though that's that's the deal uh, that's how that's how we assemble that so I'm gonna get it flipped around because the next step you need to be able to see the tongue on it oh I forgot a very important step okay very important the grip There we go slide the grip on it's actually uh, been a little hard to get on I might should have put some soapy water on it but I'll get it down there all right the pictures are a little bit funny looking but it appears to me that the off is back to the hopper so that's the way we're gonna go with this uh, inch and three quarter quarter inch you're gonna put bolt bolt now here you're going to put a washer on before I'm going to put a washer on between uh, between them so And then, of course, we have our nylock nuts again. Those bolts seem really long uh, compared to the compared to how much we've been having uh, been having stick out of them. But anyway, that's what it shows. Uh, number twenty-three, which is our inch and a quarter, the shortest ones we have. So. Uh, I don't guess I got any of them mixed up. No, that's the same size. So, anyway, got that. I'm going to snug those down a little bit and then we'll move to the next step. All right, so we got the flow rod on this end. Uh, you got this little, I guess, elongated piece. There's no hole. This end, you got a hole. So, you want to take the end with no hole. I hope you can see here. I'm kind of putting it off to the side. You can see a groove in there almost for it to go in. And then what you do, then you turn it, and it comes back into here. Now, I'm assuming we're going to close this and put this in the stop close position and probably take and move and adjust this. But I haven't looked that far ahead uh, at the instructions yet, so... Let me check that. So anyway, for now, what we're doing is just sliding that through. Uh, we're gonna put a quarter inch washer on the end of it. And then we got this 3 30 seconds uh, cotter pin, which is the smallest one in the pack. Uh, and by the way, if you're trying to figure out how to do this and you're on a phone, I realize that you're probably going to have trouble seeing. <laughs> I apologize. But I can only get that camera so close and do this uh, at least in a reasonable amount of time. I don't want a 45 minute video. All right, so we got that. I mean, obviously it just, it just works that way. At some point we have to tighten and adjust all this stuff though. Let's look at the next step. All right, so the next step, support brackets are going to go, if you're looking at the tongue back towards the spreader, you're going to go on this back bolt. So remember I said don't tighten any of this stuff up. I did snug it up enough I did not want it to come loose. So 
I'm going to go just like this. So that'll go up there in a minute when we're ready for it. Uh-oh. I'll get another one off the table for now. I'll find that one in a minute. Uh, again, you do not need any washers for this. Just going to get that on there. And then we're going to go back to the setup that we had a while ago with uh, inch and a quarter, inch and three quarter, quarter inch washer, nylock washer. Inside here, here, and start that like that. And you should have one more setup like that for the other side. For the other side. This is not something we're going to tighten completely. Uh, I am just going to get it down on the nylon. If I didn't have my stuff in reverse. Now I'm going to cut you off for a minute and find that nut that I dropped. All right, now uh, as part of step 13, we are going to tighten all the bolts except for these because as I said earlier, we're obviously going to have to adjust that with this closing. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let you watch me, but I'm going to tighten snug everything else up. Uh, I do want to be careful on this tub, this hopper, not to over tighten stuff. I mean, obviously... Uh, by the way, I did not find that quarter inch nut. Normally you have an extra nut washer or two. So hopefully that's the case or I'm going to have to... Nope, never mind. I see it. There we go. I figured when I quit looking for it, I'd find it. So let me get this tightened up and I'll check back with y'all. All right, now what we're going to put on is what I would call uh, the drive wheel. I'm not sure that's what they call it, but I would call it the drive wheel. And in order to do that, what we have to do is first spacer number 27. We're going to be on the end that has uh, the rectangle on the end of it. It has the flat side. So we're going to put spacer number 27 on. We're going to put a half inch washer on. And then we have this pneumatic tire, which is flat, by the way. <laughs> uh, hopefully that airs up. And you see it's got that rectangle uh, in it. So that's going to go... Uh, on over that against that washer that's going to be what drives it uh, we're going to put another washer out here on the outside so just like that we'll put a washer on and then we have two carter pins left and again that's aggravating to try to do with one hand but uh, that carter pin is just going to go in there and it's going to be in. So I'll get that on and show you what it looks like. All right, and there we go right there. we got the half-inch washer. got the carter pin against it. Got it bent. Uh, you can bend it. You can wrap it all the way around. Some people do. I typically don't bend mine a lot in case I have to take them off. I can reuse them again. This is not a critical situation, so I would reuse them uh, if I had to. Uh, and then we're going to flip it around to the other side. Same thing. We're going to put a spacer on, the half-inch washer's on. And uh, we're going to put a carter pin in it. But now that is not a drive wheel. Uh, that wheel will look a little bit different. It just has a bearing on both sides. Okay. So obviously you want uh, that long side to go inside. But um, anyway, let me get it flipped around here. And just as we did a minute ago, spacer. Washer wheel the 
washer. Cut a pin. We got pin and bend. And so obviously you already know this. But this is our one drive wheel. See that? Why did I choose this particular one? Metal. The only thing plastic about it is this little sleeve that holds it, but I really think that's gonna be fine. Reviews on it were pretty good. So anyway, let me get set up here for the next step. All right, I am not sure in the purpose of this. Uh, what I would do, there's probably a reason why you don't do this. I would put this in the off position and I would make sure this is closed. But what this is saying is set the stop at five. So right there, a handle is coming back to five. Okay. And then remember, we left this loose. So I can, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. I left this piece loose so that can move. See how that's. That's moving right there. Okay. Um, man, they don't have that spring nut tight at all. But I guess that come from the factory. So I can move this. And what happens when I move that particular part, what we're moving in here on the inside is the flow plate. So if I slide this up and down, see the flow plate open close not all the way but again we want it on five so what they're saying that's fully open is open it halfway which is going to be like right there this is not scientific and with that right there at middle ways we are then going to tighten this down uh, it does in the instructions caution you not to deform this thing. Uh, you don't want to... I mean, this is not steel. It is it's a metal. It's some sort of steel. But this stuff... Uh, you could cave these pipes in. Uh, doing that. So, right now, I'm on five. And I'm at the middle per that. So, when I go up there, that is closed. Uh, and I would assume if I drop the setting down here and we'll try it we'll put it all the way down on 10 and all the way on 10 should give me full open and it does okay um, that is that's the completion so this is let me just get you out and give you the specs again this is uh, the AgriFab. Item number at Lowe's, at least, is H06324. I'll put a link and all in the description on this video. Uh, the true test is, how's it going to work? Well, stick around for the next video, because uh, tomorrow we're going to run this thing. So, uh, that's it. One of the things that I like uh, on this is it has uh, your settings right here. Uh, if you're doing pellets or a granular or powder, a material type, a setting uh, at three miles per hour, uh, it gives you the different settings, uh, tells you how far it'll spread it in feet. So if, like tomorrow I'm going to do granular. Uh, if I'm at three to five, I'm going to be eight to ten foot path. Uh, if you got something fine and coarse like grass seed, it gives you that. Of course, there's going to be a chart uh, in, uh, you know, the book uh, that's going to tell me what setting to use. Matter of fact, I'm going to get out a bag of that and look at the back of it. Uh, this gives you some more information for application. Three miles per hour is a recommended speed, which is 100 feet in 23 seconds. Uh, essentially, you're going to go about 225 feet. So if you got a... a 
if you got a, a yard that's a that's an acre 200 feet by 200 feet you're going to take close to a minute to run down that uh, and the only thing I don't like about uh, this is now I'm gonna get me a board probably and put on a lawnmower with me uh, I'm gonna figure out what my setting needs to be for what I'm spreading and I think I can take a board and push that let it go because it is spring loaded it'll come back automatically to the setting and then when I get to the end of the run I can take that board behind me and push that back because I don't want uh, every turnaround that I do uh, to, to spread stuff everywhere so uh, pretty nice looking uh, piece of machinery here again mostly metal for uh, the components that you want to last so uh, this is certainly not a review on it this is a uh, assembly video and so tomorrow I won't really do a review but we will take a look at it uh, as we put it into use so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video I know it's probably been long if I'm guessing even once this is edited down uh, probably looking at a 25 minute video uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it'll be a help and a benefit to somebody else. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch. If you haven't already, man, I would love for you to subscribe. Um, my watch time is really good, but my subscriber count is terrible. Uh, so, you know, but anyway, it is what it is. Hey, appreciate you watching. My prayer for you is always the same, that the Lord might richly bless you, that you might see all of your blessings from him. Hope you have a great day.